House of the Dragon Season 2's trailer has broken viewership records, and I'm so insanely happy there's so much hype for the Game of Thrones prequel. So let's talk the trailer, including book lore. So the first shot we have is Rhaenyra looking over Shipbreaker Bay and at Storm's End, obviously very distressed because this is where she lost Luke. It's going to be incredibly heartbreaking if she's trying to find what's left of Luke's body. I'm guessing she doesn't know exactly how bad his death was and that he's in very, very tiny little bits. I guess given exactly where his bits fell during Amond and his fight, it could be either near impossible to find his body or again, she just finds little itty bitty pieces. The set on her face is interesting. If we went right where she was at Dragonstone to Storm's End, she really wouldn't have such a dirty face. Now this could be that she had a freak out and she threw herself to the ground and she was grieving or maybe she found his body and then just, you know, again, threw herself on the ground, got covered in dirt and all that. However, a darker guess would be that she burned some things around Storm's End with her dragon Cerex when she can't find his body or when she does or before she does. Her going nutso on Storm's End could explain why Lord Baratheon, despite swearing to the Greens and having a daughter betrothed to Aemond, was reluctant to get involved in lore due to dragons. He saw what one dragon could do and he just noped out until the very end of the war. I asked on my live chat what you guys thought and it seemed like the majority were for that she does burn a little bit of the surrounding area and then she finds Luke's body and then the next highest one was that it's just that she's looking for Luke body. But you can let me know in the comment section down below if you think this is just her looking for Luke's body or if it's both. She burned the area surrounding and anger but also was looking for his body. Next shot is Aegon II walking to the Iron Throne. He looks so sad and reluctant when he was crowned. He had tears in his eyes and then after the cheers of the small folk he kind of looked around and went, oh people are praising me. I'm no longer just an F up that my daddy ignores. So I think quickly the power is going to go to his head and also I again pulled people on my live chat and they agreed that Aegon is just going to be so so much worse and the things that he's going to get away with and the things he does with his power is just it's going to be horrific. A monster before and just now a monster with so much power much like Joffrey. The next scene is Daemon in his armor looking so sexy he's likely heading out to Harrenhal his wife is going about doing her business. Next is the Black's army which is in contrast to the Green's army marching. We see the High Towers banners. They're probably heading to Rook's Rest to secure the crown lands for Aegon. They also have to hit a few castles to Rook's Rest, so they could be marching to any of those places on their way. You'll notice the difference with the sigil for Rhaenyra with the Black's army camp. She's doing the traditional red dragon on black. She's not doing the quartered sigil that she has in book lore. I think maybe it would have looked a little bit goofy in the show, or maybe eventually once she forms more ties, she goes, okay, Okay, yeah, no, I'm gonna use the quarter sigil just to show where my alliances are. We see House Rosby, which is the Red Arrows, and House Stokeworth. They will be added to the Green Army despite being black loyalists at first. This is just because Lord Rosby was imprisoned in the Red Keep when he refused to bend the knee when Aegon II usurped the throne. So he was forced to give his army to Aegon II or be executed. It was kind of an easy choice for him. Lord Stokesworth changed sides just to spare his city and ended up joining the Greens. So these two House's armies will be added to the Greens before heading to Rook's Rest. If you think Lord Rosby should have just been executed and still stood against the Greens to support the Blacks, you can let me know in the comment section down below. We have a quick shot of Otto, probably him just chatting with Alicent. I find it really funny. All Ottos talk about, oh, mistakes were made in the hours following Viserys' death. It's like, well, yeah, one, you were trying to usurp Rhaenyra's throne for years now. Two, not telling his eldest daughter, super messed up. Not having any of the lords at Aegon II's coronation, also not super great. I'm sure there's probably some lords that were just like, Hey, uh, why'd you just do it in front of the small folk, which makes it look even sketchier. And then of course we had, you know, the King's Guard, Eric. He ended up escaping with Viserys' crown, which adds more legitimacy to Rhaenyra. So yeah, mistakes were made besides Otto just being a snake bitch. Oh, speaking of snake bitch. So we see snake bitch and Laris talking about how a lot of people are going to die and the winner will sit the throne. Ellison is looking a little ragged and it's probably her just seeing, oh, hey, I put my son who is a monster 
monster on the throne and also seeing what the war will cost. I still like the change that Alicent believes she's doing the right thing and she's honoring her husband's dying wishes. Now, yeah, she kept him drugged up and yeah, she ignored a lot of what he had to say until the end and then kind of hooked on one final thing. But it makes Alicent a little more sympathetic than in book lore where it's just, oh, I wanted my son on the throne, screw you or Nera. Now it's her just honoring her husband's dying wish. Sir Kristen friend zone, so I threw an epic long decade temper tantrum is beheading someone in the scene. He may be beheading Lord Gunther Darkland here, the Lord of Duskendale and a cider of the Blacks. Of course, it could also be Lord Sutton of Rook's Rest. Lots of beheadings going around in this war or, you know, in war in general. Both houses are by the water, so it could go either way. I'm kind of leaning more towards its Lord Darkland here, though. You'll notice, just like I was talking about how the difference with Rhaenyra's sigil from Book Lore, Aegon II's, again, his sigil is a little bit different. It's a gold dragon on a green field, so gold dragon for his dragon Sunfire, and then the green background for his high tower heritage or bloodline, unlike in Book Lore where it's on a black field. I don't mind this change, and it makes a lot more sense to me that they would do it. We have a small council trader meeting. I thought at first this could be Alicent, but the playing around with the ball, I think is more Aegon II showing just he really doesn't care about his duties and he's just excited about all this new power to get away with things. So I'm more leaning this is just Aegon pissing around during a small council meeting. Shots of our two monarchs, Aegon II on the Iron Throne and Rhaenyra likely at Dragonstone, both looking amazing. Uh, Rhaenyra in general, her outfits are just pure fire this season from what we've seen. The dragons on her shoulders are just 10 out of 10. Her necklace is actually the same symbol as Bela's is wearing four earrings in a future scene, so I love the idea of the stepmom for his cousin's matching jewelry. Now, it would be interesting if she had it made for them both or if it was a gift from Daemon and he just, you know, kind of lazy went with a the theme. Rhaenyra looks so good in Viserys' crown, too. We see a snake blowing out a match. Alicent is probably praying to the Seven to protect her family and end the war soon. Alicent is definitely a religious nut. We remember that she tore down all of Viserys and the Targaryen's decor and the Red Keep to replace it with the Faith of the Seven symbols and artwork. It makes sense as her hometown, Old Town, has the Faith of the Seven's headquarters located in it as of right now. Later on, the Sept of Baelor is created and that changes things a bit. We have Elon of Hall looking at sea smoke as the dragon goes overhead. This could either be him maybe trying to tame sea smoke or this could be Lenor is back to have a conversation with Rhaenyra. We have the Greens arriving at Rook's Rest for the big battle. We see a lot in general fighting going on. A lot of the people, the armies we've seen burned by dragon fire seem to be the Greens, the sigils that are seen in those brief moments. So I'd be curious to see if this is actually the Blacks on their dragons massacring them or if Amon loses control of Vagar again. Rhaenyra at Dragonstone in front of the painted table discussing war plans. We have the loyal Kingsguard Sir Eric, Daemon, and Rhaenys, of course, discussing, hey, what are our next moves? We get a close-up of Corlys, who is probably excited to get back in action. I'm a little disappointed this is the extent we get of Corlys. I figured we'd get him on a ship or something. This is just like the lamest shot they could have done for him. Like, oh, wow, a close-up of his face. Thanks, HBO. Daemon could be beheading someone or chopping something up. It could go either way. There is a werewood in the background. I'm guessing he's in the God's Wood at Hall, which should be the first place he heads to. Amon in the throne room, walking towards the Iron Throne. I'm sure he's just itching to sit on the throne. I wonder if Aegon is going to taunt him about that at one point. Um, interested to also see if Amon has deep regret for Luke. Are they even going to show that? Amon coming back to King's Landing and being like, hey, guys, uh, I may have committed a war crime. Major whoopsie. I'm sorry. Also interesting if we have uh, blood and cheese occur and we don't have the youngest child of Aegon and Helena and then, you know, Aegon wouldn't have an heir anymore if Aemon is like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm next on, uh, in line for the throne. I'm super excited about this. So it could be a little bit how Daemon in the brothel was like, oh, heir for a day when he realized, oh, I'm still my brother's heir. It could be the same thing with Aemon where Aegon loses a child, loses his only heir and Aemon's like, oh, dang, so sad. This is just looking like Allison has regrets. Uh, she's probably lost some loved ones at this point, which honestly she deserves. God, Rhaenyra's outfits this season are amazing. She and Cyrix are standing opposite of Sea Smoke and someone else. 
course, this could be Lenor coming back to offer aid or Alan of Hall. I feel like it could go either way. I'd be curious to see if Lenor offers some help, ends up dying, and then that leaves his dragon open for someone else to claim it. So we have the dragon seed going on. I think they're going to change around the order of events for book lore. I'm not positive, but given what we've seen so far, it seems kind of likely. Helena is looking up with a black veil flowing around her face, likely after blood and cheese. She's at a funeral. This is also the funeral, or it could be the marching of a dragon's head through King's Landing and them declaring, oh, look, this is the work of Renera the Cruel. But going back to me saying, yeah, there's a lot of burning people and we're seeing a lot of uh, massacre. This is definitely the Battle of Rook's Rest where we see a ton of devastation. You can see House Rosby and Stokesworth and other green army being burned by the fire. So either it's Rainey's on melees or Amond has lost control of Vagar again. I find Rainey's words to Rhaenyra kind of... The one girl. You could have honored Viserys' wishes when you escaped King's Landing, regardless of you saying the war wasn't yours to start. Two, what do you want Renair to do? Just let the Greens steal and murder? What is this warning? Yeah, the gods aren't happy if family is at war. Cool. And does Renera really need to be told that a war with dragons will have devastating results? I think she's very aware. Probably at this point, she's biting her tongue, not wanting to share with Rainey's like, hey, there's another reason I'm just not fighting for the throne. I'm fighting for the safety of the entire Seven Kingdoms because of the coming of the others. Kind of stupid that they just don't share it with the entire family, but then it would probably get out and freak the rest of the Seven Kingdoms out, which maybe wouldn't be a bad thing. <laughs> we would then not see the dwindling of the Night's Watch during the time of the books because people would be like, no, we need to keep protecting this wall because the others could come at any moment and we don't want shit to go down. It could also have been more of a way to kind of not make it so Robert Baratheon set the Iron Throne because people would be more likely to be, hey, the prophecy says a Targaryen needs to sit on the throne. Yeah, you have some Targaryen blood in you, Robert, but we need, we need Rhaegar. We need someone of... A, a, a better lineage with more dragon blood in them. Of course, it could go the opposite way where Robert could be like, hey, they're just saying that because they wanted to stay in power. It's kind of like the doctrine of exceptionalism that Jaehaerys did where he told the faith and the rest of the Seven Kingdoms, hey, okay, the Targaryens aren't gods, but they're above men. So we kind of have special rules and we can do special things that you all can't do. Bela is on Moondancer with the matching jewelry that I mentioned. I just, I think that little detail is so cute. I love the closeness. Now, Raina should be at the Eyrie and Bela did ride Moondancer during the dance, but the dragon was so small that it wasn't until a year into the war that she rode Moondancer for the first time. So I'm guessing they're changing that. So according to book lore, the dance of the dragon starts in 129 AC and she doesn't ride her dragon until the first time in 130 AC. This change is just likely to give her something to do so that Daemon's two daughters just aren't sidelined. Bela also wants to stay close to Jace. She wants to marry him. She's already betrothed to him. So it, it makes sense that they're just trying to give her something to do and they're they're sizing up the dragons. If you notice in general, if you follow the, the book lore and then look at the sizes of the dragons, they're not being true to scale. There are definitely dragons that should be smaller and there's definitely dragons that should be bigger but I think just for the sake of drama they're changing it. Of course you could add in lore reasons like oh the maesters were just kind of making up the sizes or this was written so much later so the sizes were kind of guessed or messed up or forgotten a bit. We see King's Landing, Allison is being rushed to safety and people are running. Allison is wearing a black veil so I'm guessing it's just the funeral from Blood and Cheese. Um, why some people are grabbing at Allison and the King's Guard are trying to get her to safety. A lot of reasons it could be that there are people that are black loyalists, therefore Renera, the last they heard, Viserys wanted her on the throne, and now they're like, hey, um, you went against those wishes and you put your son on the throne. We're not buying that Viserys changed this on his deathbed. So they could be attacking her as a, you messed up, this is sick. Renera deserves to be on the throne. Or it could be because of where the Valarians and where the Targaryen 
Marines are situated, they can create a blockade for King's Landing and make it very hard for goods to come in. So we could see starvation happening in King's Landing, and then they're out having a funeral saying, oh, hey, mourn for this lost person, while the, the small folk are starving, and they're like, okay, yeah, great, but um, you started this by usurping the throne, and we need food. Guess all those bulls of brown are gonna start having a lot more puppies, kittens, birds, and humans added to it. Here we have a House Bracken soldiers who support Aegon II, uh, the poor Riverlands in general, they never catch a break, and it's just gonna be an absolute bloodbath of the Blackwoods and Brackens going at it. People burning Daemon and Craxus, and then blood and cheese event where Helena is being told to choose, you know, which kid do you want us to kill? An easy choice for, you know, most mothers. I look forward to Helena being a little bit more not quite there after this event and seeing how the actress pulls it off because in in general Helena wasn't the most stable person and now with the events of blood and cheese it's it's gonna be so much worse we see Kristen hitting someone with a helm people are getting wrecked in battle Kristen Cole is either hitting a Lord Darkland supporter or just a random black supporter soldier Ugh, this is likely the duel between the King's guards Eric and Eric I'm not excited to see this is going to be so sad Bad. We see Amon on Vegar, and I'm sure he's 100% in control the entire time. There's gonna be no more mess ups like with Luke. Everything's gonna be great. 10 out of 10. Renera on her dragon fighting or burning. Renera stays out of most of the fighting in book lore, so this could be around the time that she's actually burning around Storm's End. Or, you know, the Maesters could be nasty liars because they weren't kind to Renera in lore. She is wearing the same outfit as the beginning when she's looking over at Storm's storm's end, so this could be the same thing. She's riding her dragon, really upset, burning things around storm's end, and looking for Luke's body. Or maybe this is just her battle outfit, and she wears it in multiple encounters. Last shot is Vagar, and my god, Vagar is terrifying. Okay, so that is my breakdown for the trailer. I will be releasing more lore, uh, history, little tidbits, easter eggs. I am insanely excited for summer of next year. Definitely because I have a social life and I'm gonna go out and do a lot of things and not because I just want to sit at home and watch House of the Dragon season two every Sunday. Definitely not. So like, subscribe, let me know what you thought about the trailer and any little tidbits that you have.